when you are 50, 55, I know that 55, 60, 60, we can't go. We, we're both old men, we can't go as fast. Yeah. He's older, but you're right. <laughs> we can't go, at, you can't, oh, I'm gonna work 12 hours, I'm gonna work 14 hours. Now Desmond and I, we were just having a conversation about how to manage money. I think that's a very, very important topic. I thought I would share this with you. I don't know where this goes, but I think I wanna give you some tips that will benefit you as well. Yes, thanks, Tipu. Um, I guess for context for you guys, I, I came just a few minutes ago, I was uh, showing uh, Sifu Danlock my finances, right? So uh, I was late on my taxes, believe it or not. Many of you might know my story. I was uh, on the verge of bankruptcy a couple of years ago, uh, thanks to this wonderful mentor of mine who helped me to not only dig myself out of that, that mess I was in, but now I'm living a fairly, you know, I would say relatively comfortable, uh, comfortable life. life. Right? I think most people would aspire to get to a position I'm at, and I say that very humbly, mm -hmm. but now what? Mm -hmm. What to do next? So I was late on my taxes at first, and my corporate taxes, my personal taxes, I had to get that mess cleaned up. Yes. Now that that's cleaned up, I, I just showed you the numbers. Yes. Um, and I guess just to put things in, in uh, for people's understanding, I, I live in a, I don't own a home yet, uh, but I make a multiple six-figure income. I live in a designer concrete, you know, home. Uh, three floors, fairly nice and big. I've got a luxury SUV. Um, I know that you always talk about middle class <laughs> buy a lot of, you know, assets, assets that are actually liabilities. Yes. And I actually just got thrown under the bus here <laughs> for one of them. So I thought maybe you guys could learn at the same time, right? Because I'm at that stage right now and some of you might be at that stage. And you Or maybe you're learn. just getting started. You yeah. are still going through school and you're wondering, hey, now you you just got your first job. You just have some money coming in. How do you manage it, right? Because one thing I always say is not how much money you make is how much money you keep. Right. And it's not just how much money you keep, it's how well you invest that money. Right. Now think back when you came back to Canada, mm -hmm. you, I mean, you were struggling financially, right? making yes. just a tiny little bit of money. Now, now compared to back then, you're... you've 10 times. 10 times. Yes. 10 as, 10, 10 x what you were making before. That's correct. Where did that money go? That's correct. Right? <laughs> Where is it going every where month? Did that, right, right. Where did that go? And think about even if you make two, three times more than what you're making now, where right. would that money go? True. So it's the habit that's more important, not just the amount. Got because it. I hear this all the time that, oh, once I, I used to lie to myself this way too. Right. Where, oh, once I make more money, I'll, I'll, I'll manage it. That's not how it works. It's the habit that makes a difference. Got so it. if you have, I don't care if you're making minimum wage, you have maybe $2,000 coming in every month, you're not managing $2,000 well, 5,000, 10,000, 15,000 is gonna be exactly the same. You wonder to yourself, where did all that money go? Mm. And in fact, you'll probably have more stuff, you're more in debt, you're more credit card debt, and all that stuff. Right. And then you think, oh, let me get to that 20,000, 30,000, and then my problems will go away. It won't. Right. It's because it's the same habit. And it's probably even worse because I'm, I'm middle age now, yes. so I don't have much time. Yes, correct. So I'm desperately now trying to play catch up yes. on um, how, you know, what are some of the smarter things I can do with the money I've got. And First, because most people don't know that money has many jobs. Yeah, I didn't know that. Okay. Yes. Most people, they think money has one job, which is to spend. Right. They think, I get money, I spend money. Right. right. That's broke people believe. Growing up thinking money has one job. People who are a little bit smarter, they know money has two jobs, okay. which is to spend and to save. Got it. Yeah. Right. The really smart ones, they know that money has three jobs, okay. which is to hold on. Let me. Let me which yeah. is to spend. Okay. And also to save yes. and to invest. Spend, save, invest. And invest. Okay. And the very wise people, right. very wise people, they know money has four jobs, which is to spend, save, invest, and donate. Mm, yes. To and give you look back, at the yeah. Warren Buffett, you look at Bill Gates, right? Yeah. Those are the people who really get it. Money has four jobs. Right. So the way I used, to, and I, this is not new, by the way. I learned this from the book uh, Richest Man in Babylon. That's right. This is not from the me. buckets, right? The buckets, right? Yeah. So uh, it talks about that. So I want to keep it very, very simple because so here's why I know this. If you make the the your money management system very complicated, mm -hmm. you're not going to use it. You're not gonna use it. I'm not gonna use it. Like no one's gonna use it, right? Right. So I want to keep it very, very simple. So I, I just I use the bucket management, bucket money management system. So what exactly? What is the bucket management? I guess for simplicity's sake. Yeah. Um, and and you know I mean, I I sometimes have discipline. I think I'm a pretty disciplined person, yes. right? You yes. would agree. And uh, but I find myself having you know. Shit happens, life yes. happens. Oh, suddenly this month we need this, or that month we need this, and, or. And always, something always happens. Yeah, right. so it's hard to maintain that discipline That's when right. all these emergencies keep popping up. That's right. So, so very simple. Imagine every dollar that comes in, yes. you divide it into five buckets. Okay. Very simple. So, the first bucket is what I call your necessities bucket. 
Okay. So this is where you you pay your bills, right? I would say 60% of your money. 60%. So every dollar that comes in, 60 cents goes into this bucket. Got it. Your electricity bill, your car payment, your house payment, right? All that stuff, your internet, your cell phone bill. Right. right. That's your necessity bucket. Got so it. let's say you're making a thousand bucks a month, hypothetically, 600 bucks goes into this. You're making 10,000, then 6,000 goes into that. Got it. Very simple. Makes sense. So that's 60%. The next bucket is what I call your emergency bucket. Okay. That's then 10% of your money, every dollar that comes in, goes into this bucket. Right. Now, emergency money means money you put away for a rainy day. Right. It could be medical expenses. Yes. Right? It could be something happens to your family, you want to have that money there. Yeah. This money is, uh, people talk about emergency fund. I don't like to touch this money. Right. How do you not touch that? I just put it away. So yeah. what I do, <laughs> is I actually go to my bank banker, set up a bank account where every dollar comes in, it goes into this account. It's like a savings account, I it's don't nothing touch. fancy, just... I do not touch. Okay. It just goes into that. Right. Don't, don't feel like, oh, yeah, I, 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 wanna, I wanna take a vacation, let me dip into that money. That's right. not... And you wouldn't use that money if to buy gold or investments or stocks no. or something that came up, no. you wouldn't touch it? No. Okay. From a psychological point of view, what I notice is when you have cash, yes. it attracts more cash. Hmm. I, mean, I don't have time to go into all of that, but what I know is when you have money, it's like the habit, when you can accumulate money, when you have the habit of accumulating money, you accumulate more money. Right. When you don't have the habit of accumulating money, you always have no money. Doesn't right. matter how much money you make. Okay. So that's the, the second bucket. Second bucket. Second bucket, okay. The third bucket is the investment bucket. So that's also 10%. So 60%, yes. right? 10%, 10%, that's, that's your, your, think of that's your future, that's your retirement. Got it. So richest man in Babylon talk about pay yourself first. This mm -hmm. is the pay yourself bucket, that 10%. Got it, right? okay. So that's that 10%. And then you have 10% is what I call your learning bucket. Okay. This is where you learn your skills. Right. right? You go to the events, get coaching, uh, seminars, online courses, 10%. So imagine you've got a thousand bucks, right? 600 bucks goes into the first necessities, yes. right? Then you have uh, 100 bucks goes into the emergency, yes. 100 bucks goes to investment, right. 100 bucks goes to learning, right. could be reading a book. And then last one, that last 10%, that's your fun, fun bucket. The fun bucket, that's okay. The, that's, your, that's your Mont Blanc pen, that's your uh, Chutoro, that's your sashimi. It, it might be a little bit big, that bucket might be a little bit big right now. It's a little right bit now. big, right? It's a little bit big right a little now. Bit big. If I'm honest, it's right. a little bit big so, right now. So then you know if it's 10%, then there's no guilt. Right. right, okay. So when I buy something fast, like AP Watch, yes. I use the fund money. Got it. I do not touch all these other money. Got it, right? okay. Because then you, there's no guilt. But if you don't put it in the bucket, it's very easy. To, oh, well, yeah. you know, I, I should I should take that vacation. Mm -hmm. Suddenly, well, your, your learning bucket, that's gone. Right. Your emergency bucket, that's like next to nothing. So I've got a question, uh, Sifu. So, you know, I know that you also say invest in yourself mm -hmm. and you know, my investment bucket is very small right now and yep. as you know, you know, where we live, it's very expensive. Yep. I mean, I would be saving for years before I could even make a small investment. So I've taken, just correct me if I'm wrong, but I've taken some of that investment money and have invested it into learning. So my learning, I've doubled up my learning yes, by investing fine. myself that's to get fine. higher income skills yep. and then through that high income skills, it increases more income and then you know, I start. I should start now. So, so you notice up. when you do this, when you when you put in use the bucket systems. Yeah. The first reaction you you most people would have, I can't live off like sixty percent. Yeah. There's no way in hell that that doesn't that's not enough. So then you know, okay, you need to upgrade your skills. Right. So you earn more. Right. We talk about so this. So not a just lot. like cutting coupons, saving money. We're not about, talking about that. But right. at the same time, while you're increasing income, you need to have the habits in place. Got it, okay. I would rather, if you cannot do the 10% right now, mm -hmm. do 1%. Do something. Do 2%. Because you need to have the habit in place. Okay. If you have zero habit and you think it's like a, some future thing is gonna happen, it's not gonna happen. Yeah. If you cannot do six, okay, let's say 80% you're going into that, let's do five, 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 five. Would the bankers look at you weird if you go to a bank and just say, Oh, they would. Hey, it doesn't matter, they're broke. Right. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. Right. Okay. So it's the habit that makes the difference. Got it. Like the, the, your investment uh, investment bucket, that's the, the your golden goose. Right. Right. But you look at, I think I was reading statistics, like the average Americans, mm -hmm. uh, more than 50% of Americans have less than $500 in their savings. Yeah, many of them don't even have bucks. The, the three months you need. Oh, forget, the forget three months, months. Yeah. 500 bucks. Wow. So it means that one emergency, Yes. Wiped out. Wiped out. They're one paycheck away from poverty. 
Right. That's like 50, 60 percent of the American population. Wow. That is, and America is one of the wealthiest countries in the world. Yeah. I've got another question. I'm not sure if you want to add that also with this discussion, sure. but the leveraging of credit cards yes. and rebuilding of credit. Yeah. And I know you're not a credit specialist. You're not. That's not your. You're. You're, you're an invest. You know. You're a mentor and so forth. But um, I was always told that you know, like for obviously the, the counters that you've introduced me to have been very helpful. You know, to divide and make sure you have two clear credit cards, one for business use, one for personal yeah, one use. Corporate, yeah. Right? And then even that to not to max them out every month. Mm -hmm. To use 60, 70 percent and pay them down. Yeah. 60, so, so make sure you down. don't you don't you don't accumulate a credit card debt. Yes. You pay that off every single month. Got it. So pay it. So if it's as long as within that sixty percent, yes. you're fine. So that would that those credit cards are all under, the credit cards, all the expenses, all so the use those credit cards to pay for the you're utilities, fine. pay for those things, and anything like that. Yeah. But then, just don't leverage using oh the fund money. You only have one thousand bucks of fund money, but yes. I'm gonna I'm gonna spend three thousand. Oh, it's okay. I put it in my card. I'll pay it back next month. That's what you don't want to do. Then you think That's about it. You if you're paying 18, 20% on a credit card um, interest rate, yeah. and you are saving like 1%, mm -hmm. they do the number, something is wrong. But here's the thing. Okay. What I learned is this. This is like the bare minimum. Wow, okay. The 10%, mm -hmm. like Richard Ben and Babylon talks about the 10%, yeah. it's like bare minimum. Meaning that if you want to be comfortable in 20, 30 years, mm. This is if you want to get it there, like on uh, like a fast track. Yeah. This number is too low. Too low. Too slow. Yeah. It's I too low. It. I can see it. I, I, I was I was writing an article. I'll share this with you. Yeah. If you're making less than 50k, mm -hmm. 50k, 10% is good. Yes. If you're making like 50 to 200k, that numbers your 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 investment bucket yes. needs to be at 15%. 15. Okay. Got it. If you're making 200 to 500k, 25%. Damn. If you're making a million or more, 35%. Mm. So that means then 35% go to investment. Your what shrinks is your necessity bucket. Right. Because you cannot be making a million bucks in and your necessities 600, keep being. I mean, come that on. just means you're being yeah, uh, you're doing, frivolous and yes. spending. Too you much still money. spend like yeah. 300. If you're making a million, 350k. Yeah. That's fine. But so maybe like but eight imagine, pieces of sushi, not 20 pieces of sushi. Three and pieces spending. of sushi, and then get some get a udon, right? It's cheap, right? Get a miso sushi. Don't right? be buying all your friends' sushi. That's you right. Know, the otoro, chutoro, it's all the not, big stuff. Because you because when you know the numbers, example, yeah. I, I tease Desmond. Say, oh man, that's when you spend like 200 bucks on sushi. Because in my mind, I'm like holy fuck, because that's 200 bucks if you can put in in some kind of investment in, in a stock in 20 years. That view is expensive. That's true. Like that, like whoa. It's not just two hundred dollars. That's not all. Oh, it's not probably a couple dollars. thousand dollars. It's not two hundred dollars, right. right? And I'm not saying like I'm the last guy they will tell you not to enjoy your life and things like that. Do it this way. Yeah. As your income increases, you do it this way. The fun money, spend yes. whatever you want. It's kind of a reward, like maybe once a month if you did something that was worth it, that earned more. That's no problem. Like, like you can do reward stuff every single month. Just don't go over the limit. Got and it. you don't. You want this to be automatic. When okay. this requires you to sit down and you do it, it won't happen. I'm just telling you, it won't happen. You, it has to be done automatically. So talk, talk to the bank. Talk to the bank and say, your banker will look at your weird and say, why do you set up like four? What the hell is this? Mm -hmm. Right? And then you're like, you gotta pay some little a couple bucks for the accounts fees and forget about that stuff. It doesn't matter, right? It's the habit of it. Mm -hmm. So then you know, because then you have fun with this. Okay. At first, when I did it, I had no money, right? right? But I did it. I was one percent. Yeah, one percent just emergency, right? I was spending more on learning, but it was just no money because I, I wasn't dead. But I still do it. Mm -hmm. Then it's like oh, one point five percent, two percent, three percent, four percent, right? Mm -hmm. And then to more and more. One one person inspired me so tremendously. Uh, Sir John Templeton mm -hmm. from Templeton Fund, billionaire. He started off um, investing one percent of what he earns. Yes, and spends ninety nine percent. Not didn't have a lot of money. By before he passed away, yes. he was only spending one percent of what he earns, wow. and ninety-nine percent invested. Wow, that's like he reversed that. Mm -hmm. So you gotta think about, and then you get because then you you be excited about looking at the your numbers. emergency fund. Like, oh yeah. yeah, you feel good. Like you know what, things are okay. Some, something happens. I I could I could have I could take care of my family. I could make that happen, right? Now the emergency fund is just like whatever I paid off on the credit cards. I guess you know. You sure, I may mean. have some good credit, but let's yeah, that's the only emergency fund. But and then and then you're looking at your investments. Like oh, holy yeah. shit, that's I got next to nothing. Most we have next to nothing. Yeah. Right. And and they're like oh yeah. And then that's why they think let me buy some 
stocks or crypto cryptocurrency and all, and all stuff, right? You don't look at that, you just look at that. Spoke What's before. a healthy number to get to in your investment bucket before you can even look at investments, you know? Just put it into it. Okay. Don't even think about that so much. Got it. Because the right thing, if you do due diligence, aim for, don't get greedy. Yes. Seven, eight, nine percent, ten percent, ten percent. Like, don't get greedy with it. Got it. Don't. Oh, I'm gonna get a twenty percent return. Forget about it. Right. What you want is a consistent return, that eight percent, that nine percent, but over a long period of time. Right. Right. So you think that you say, let's say you're gonna retire at sixty-five. Yes. You say, okay, if you have that much time, but knowing if you don't put money into it. No. Yeah. I don't have much time for that. Yeah. I've got yeah. like another twenty-five years. Right. So. Yeah. Right? And yeah. knowing when you are 50, 55, I know that 55, 60, 60, we can't go. We're both old men, we can't go as fast. Right? He's older. But you're right. <laughs> we can't go, at, you can't, oh, I'm going to work 12 hours, I'm going to work 14 hours. Hell no, yeah. it's exhausting. Yeah. It's exhausting, right? Now, you're, you're now, now sit down, like for a few, like, okay, when I was younger, 20 oh. somewhat years old, I can do this for 10 hours straight. Now, like two hours into, oh, you know, my back aches, my <laughs> neck aches, like my hand, like I gotta go spend some more money on a massage. Yeah, like like that. Yeah, seriously, right? I do. No, like seriously, for real, yeah. right? Now I go get a massage every single week. It's the same thing. But so that's how we manage money. Mm.